Hey guys, what's up? This is Sneel and I'm not going to bore you again with the foolish repeating redundant formality of an intro that I've been doing over the last 3 to 4 videos. This is video number 5 in a six part sub series catering to all the aspects of this free life changing amazing chord generator VST plugin for Windows called Chords. It's made by Code FN42. So over the last Three to four videos we focused on some of the conventional aspects and conventional flexibilities of chords as a plugin. In this video, I hope to use the flexibility and customization of this plugin in a rather unconventional manner, and it's quite unconventional. I don't know if you guys have any guesses, but uh, drum roll, please. Okay, nothing happened. Any which ways, let's head on to this tutorial to the beat cave. Now all the earlier set of tutorials focused on chords as a MIDI chord generator for instruments with notes and melodies. But what if we use this to combine sounds which are not melody or note dependent or driven, but more rhythm dependent? What if we used chords for combining and complementing and mapping drum sounds? from our drum VSTs. Sounds absurd? Yes. Sounds absurdly awesome? Oh yes. Now this tutorial will definitely benefit people who don't know how to drum or do a bit of finger drumming on their Yamaha slash Casio keyboards and would like to have some sort of slick beats be it digital synthesized or live drum beats in the respective compositions and make it a little more dynamic. I remember 10 15 years ago when I laid my hands on a Casio and Yamaha keyboard the thing was that the keys were mapped in such a way that it didn't allow me to utilize my fingers of both left and right hand efficiently and since I'm more of a left hand player I would like to have more usage of the fingers on my left hand rather than the right well in a sense that's the entirety of the purpose of this tutorial to help you map the drum keys and the respective drum sounds in any which way you want that is convenient for you and would enable you to make some kick ass drum sounds and beats and patterns and rhythms before i begin there will be two things to take into consideration one is your respective drum vst and understanding what kind of sounds are there in your drum vst second is more on the lines of this tutorial particularly because as i mentioned i would be using my qwerty keyboard and not the midi keyboard So the second part of this is an understanding of what key corresponds to which note in the QWERTY keyboard. So I'm just going to show the layout of the QWERTY keyboard and which respective note presides where. In terms of our QWERTY keyboard, it starts from the bottom left and then the middle row and then the top row to the right. So here is the reference image of the different keys mapped from C, C sharp, D, D sharp respectively all the way to B. on the qwerty keyboard I recommend you guys take a screenshot of this as this layout is exactly similar and synchronizes with the same layout as the virtual midi keyboard on reaper so if you're managing to play drums here with this layout you can do the same perfectly well with reaper as well too many wells well 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 Effectively your QWERTY keyboard gives you 2 and a half octaves and not 3 octaves fully. I know I shouldn't have been wasting time doing this but it's important that people note and figure out where these layouts are and try to correlate them with their keyboard if they have one, the music keyboard, so that it becomes much easier for them to, you know, get the hang of this while making drum beats because trust me, in my experience making drum beats with uh, a wireless QWERTY keyboard has been amazing. So as mentioned before you could save the screenshot as a reference for any project you want to work on musically with your desktop keyboard. One thing before accessing the drum sounds on FL Studio, I had made this huge huge blunder of writing off and discarding so many amazing drum sounds and drum VSTs many years ago because of a simple ignorant fact on my end. I did not know the interface that well to know there was one simple trick and hack to get the best sounds. Whenever I loaded a plugin and was blown away by the visual presentation of the UI, my hands were so excited just to bang the keys on the keyboard. But to my utter dismay, 
Whatever key I played on my keyboard, I wasn't able to access the bass kick and snare, which were pretty much the most important drum sounds for me. Now, if you face this issue for a year or so using FL Studio with a QWERTY keyboard, like I did, then welcome to the club. I found out the solution to that very recently. It was as recent as three years ago, and I've been using FL Studio since 2010. So just a practical example, I have this free Donationware plugin here, Empty Power Drum Kit. Now it looks awesome. It sounds even more awesome for the modern rock type of genre and more modern metal genres and subgenres. Now this drum kit is with me and as a result, I've been trying to press all the keys. Let me go ahead and just try pressing some keys on my keyboard. So I've pressed almost all the keys right from Z below all the way to P on top but there's no bass kick or snare. The simple solution to this is to hover to the top area next to the tempo and beat pattern and you will find an icon which is like 50% QWERTY keyboard, 50% piano keys. Right click on that and choose C3. As a default standard, this key scale is set to C4, the fourth octave starting C. So let's move this to the lower octave scale, which is C3. And now, let me go ahead and play the Z key, which I'm assuming should be the bass kick. Sometimes things are in front of you and you just don't notice, huh? Wow. As you can see, this option has really helped me use the QWERTY keyboard to such an extent that with regard to beat making, I turned a blind eye to my MIDI keyboard and just harnessed the desktop keyboard capabilities. Now on Reaper, this similar thing could happen where you might not be able to access the bass kick and drum sounds on the earlier keys. So now I'm on Reaper and I have loaded the same drum plugin and I'm just gonna go ahead and enable the virtual MIDI keyboard. Similarly, a certain issue is occurring here that I'm not able to access the bass drum and snare drum. And as you can see, there's a simple option here. Now, all you have to do is click on the virtual MIDI keyboard and press your left arrow, which will automatically transpose it to C3. And voila! Please ignore the weird flangery type of sound of Reaper right now because I've kept two DAWs open and that's an issue. So now that is a great power you could harness from both FL Studio and Reaper with regard to drum VSTs and make sure you're on C3 and use your QWERTY keyboard to its best possible potential. We've got that working and up and fine. So yay! You're missing the point. Okay, I understand. Thanks so much, Iron Man. <laughs> but he's right, you know. Let me get to the point. Let me show you what I intended to do. So now I have this empty power drum kit in front of me. And I'm just sampling the sounds in front of me. So as of now, I'm just going to play each sound and tell you what each note means. At C3, that is choosing this at C3. The Z key is the C note, which is the bass kick. Then... C sharp, which is signified by the S key, is the rim shot. X is the snare. And let me just find one decent open hat. Ah, there it is. The J key is the open hat. So Z, bass kick. X is the snare and J is the open hat. Alright, I just have this in mind now. So while this interface shows me that there's only one bass kick, I'd like to have the option of a double bass kick and I don't think I'll be using the rim shot sound anytime soon for one of my compositions. That being said, I'm gonna hover to the chords plugin. Please note, chords is already mapped onto output port 3 while the empty power drum kit is mapped onto output input 3 input port 3. So we are on chords. Each key 
has been assigned here and each key has a respective plot here as well. Alright, so now I'm just gonna play using this and see what happens. Okay, C is corresponding to the bass kick. D is corresponding to the snare drum. And the note A sharp is corresponding to the open hat. Now, as I said earlier, I do not want the rim shot, but I'd rather have the double bass. So all I have to do is go to C sharp, that is here, change that to C. And now let us check out whether it is a double bass or not. Okay, this is not 80s, let's try something else. Okay, alright, I'm kind of containing my excitement for obvious reasons, but it sounds good, it works perfectly fine, it's awesome. Now maybe I'd like an addition to one of the bass kick, maybe have something incorporated so it would sound a little more complete if I'm planning a certain pattern that I'd want the bass kick with something. Now that I know that C is the bass kick, and I know that A sharp is the open hat. What if I try to put C and A sharp together? Let's check it out. So now you have a bass kick along with an open hat. Let's just try something. Okay, A sharp was here and A sharp corresponded to the J key. So all I had to do is make sure that I would find the exact same key, I would find the exact same drum sound and which key it is mapped to respectively in the drum VST and then add it to the respective chord combination. So this is just a simple, a very very simple premise of how to use the chord or a two note thing in drums. So that you can affect not just one kick or not just one particular drum sound but a combination of two to three. Now this is not just applying only to live drums and the kind of rock and metal drums that I mainly deal with but imagine you had a synthesized drum set to have bass with some sort of element complementing it. It would be awesome. So in its entirety Chords gives you the option to map 12 different drum sounds on 12 keys in an octave according to your choice and preference also provided that your drum VST respectively has 12 different drum sounds or more and not only the fact that you can map it according to your convenience so you can play it in a similar regard on your QWERTY keyboard as well as a MIDI keyboard you can also combine different drum sounds so that you don't have to unnecessarily work your fingers in different areas of the QWERTY keyboard and MIDI keyboard and you can combine two, three sounds and try and mix and match and experiment and come out with some crazy ass freaking experimental cool shit. So just keep in mind that you need to know your drum VST instrument and the different sounds that are there and you need to know which key is mapped to which respective drum sound. This is imperative when trying to map multiple drum notes on one key. So that's pretty much about how to use chords to creatively and effectively and experimentally harness the power of your drum VST and also give your finger drumming skills some mojo. Yeah baby, yeah! Well I feel rather sad to say this that from my end at least all the amazing wonders and flexibility options of chords come to a close and in the next and concluding video as a part of this sub-series I will talk about the drawbacks and limitations of chords. So until then 
enjoy all these tutorials have fun with it that's the main important part have fun with it experiment and know that there's so much that could be enhanced to your already existing compositions to the nth degree i'll see you soon until then cheers psycho out